Weight. You can lose muscle while working out? We all know that high load muscular contractions performed consistently over time induce muscle growth. But muscle building is a very energy intensive process. So what happens to the muscles that are not recruited during exercise? For example, my triceps when I'm doing bicep curls. Do they actually atrophy or lose muscle volume? This super cool study suggests that this actually might be happening. So if you want to make sure that your training program is hitting all the muscle groups, this video is definitely something for you. All right, let's dig into it. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied the interaction between nutrients and exercise and how those affect muscle growth. And in these videos, I want to bring some of that science back to you guys. But before we jump into it, I want to do a little game. At the end of the video, I will pose a question about something related that I said in the video or during the whole process of the video. And if you are subscribed to the channel and provide the right answer in a Google form, you will get a chance to win or a free training program, one month of free training with WhatScience, or a one-to-one -one consultation, which is worth $100. So I think that's a quite a good deal. All right, so as I said, building muscle is a very energy intensive process. For example, a recent study calculated that you need approximately 6,700 kilocalories, so a surplus of 6,700 kilocalories to build one kilogram of muscles. All right, so if you have a surplus of let's say 200 kilocalories per day, this takes a long time. Building muscle is a long, consistent process. Same if you would do one bout of resistance exercise, for example, a CrossFit session or a whole body resistance exercise session, your basal metabolic rate can be elevated for up to 48 hours. Indeed, it has been shown that building new proteins or muscle protein synthesis is the second most energy intensive process of the cell, all right? So you need a lot of energy to build more muscle. With that question in mind, the researchers behind this study were thinking, okay, so if you do resistance exercise, we all know that the recruited muscles are going to hypertrophy. I mean, 500,000 studies have shown this uh, in the past. But what happens with the non-recruited muscles? Do they maintain their volume or can they even decrease in volume in some, some circumstances? So what did they do? A very straightforward, simple, but very good study uh, setup. They had 21 untrained participants. That's important to understand. These people were untrained. 50-50, 11 men and 10 females. So very good to also include some females in uh, this study. The training was 10 weeks of supervised in-lab single joint resistance training for the whole body. So they did bicep curls, they did uh, tricep curls, they did leg extension, leg curls, and so on. I will get into the training in a minute. Then they measured muscle volume with an MRI scan. So that's the, the gold standard of measuring not only muscle volume, but also which muscles are actually increasing or decreasing in muscle volume. And then the nutrition, importantly, they could eat as much as they want. So this is called ad libitum. Um, but they also had to uh, fill out a food questionnaire before three weeks in and six weeks in the training uh, program. That was so a self-reported food questionnaire. And importantly also, they had to uh, consume 0.3 grams per kilogram of whey protein after each resistance exercise session. That is just to stimulate a sufficient amount of protein intake because sometimes, certainly in untrained people, this can be a, a problem. So let's talk briefly about the exercise protocol because obviously in the context of this study, this is very important. They always did single joint exercises. So for example, uh, for the elbow flexures, they did uh, bicep curls, uh, they did with, with dumbbell weights, then they also did uh, elbow extensions with dumbbells, uh, and for the legs, they did uh, knee extensors, and they also did knee flexors. So they didn't do compound exercise, for example, deadlift or squats or pull-ups or anything around those more compound exercises. Important to uh, understand this. And during every training sessions, three or four sets were performed until failure. So they always went to muscle failure uh, at 60% of their 1RM. Why 60%? Because these were untrained individuals and you cannot have too high loads. But it has been shown that this type of exercises induce muscle growth in the recruited muscles. That for sure. 
So let's look at the increases or decreases in muscle volume of all the different muscles they could uh, analyze with their MRI analysis method. And here I think you have very cool data and that's also why I show this study. First of all, the black bars are the primary recruited muscles. For example, with the bicep curl, it's gonna be the long and the short head of the biceps. The gray bars are the secondary recruited muscles, so they also are involved in moving uh, the segment, but not primary recruited. And then you also have the open bars, and those are the muscles that are not recruited during the exercise. And you see here that all the primary and secondary recruited muscles all increased in muscle volume. Obviously, because you target them for muscle hypertrophy, it clearly worked their training program. And then it gets very interesting, because all the open bars, or all the muscles, for example, the adductor brevis, the gastrocnemius, the medial head, and so on and so forth, you see it at the bottom of this graph, they or they didn't show any hypertrophy or atrophy, or two muscles, the adductor magnus and the soleus muscle, which is a calf muscle, uh, actually decreased in muscle volume, so they atrophied significantly, so that's the only ones who were significantly atrophying during their resistance training protocol. So that's quite cool that there are some muscles within the body that lose total volume while others can gain muscle volume. This also shows that the primary driver of muscle hypertrophy is muscular recruitment. It's not nutrition, it's not recovery, it's not whatever sleep and so on. It is actually how much recruitment there is of the muscle. Here you can see from their supplementary file a very nice overview on which muscles do hypertrophy and which muscles actually atrophy. You see here that the blue ones or the darker blue ones are the ones that primarily hypertrophy. So you see immediately that these are, for example, on the front, the, the thigh muscles, the tibialis anterior, and on the back it's mostly the hamstrings. And then you see the red colored are the ones that are primarily going into atrophy. And interestingly enough, for example, you see here that clearly Clearly the soleus muscle, so one of the calf muscles, clearly is showing some atrophy as well as the adductor magnus, which is a thigh muscle that was not recruited during their leg extension and leg uh, curls exercises. So again, very important that you have to pick the right exercises to recruit the right muscles for aesthetics or for functional power. That is clear. This reminds me of some data I generated myself now four to five years ago where we let uh, mice run in a resistance wheel and found that some muscles saw an increase in protein synthesis, so increase in hypertrophic uh, stimulus, as well as the molecular signals towards this protein synthesis, for example, an increase in mTOR1, and some did not. For example, the soleus muscle, which we know is actively recruited during running, showed a high increase in, for example, SSK1 or other downstream factors of mTOR, which is a, let's say, a, a parameter of muscle protein synthesis in this case, and other muscles, for example the plantaris, which is also another uh, big calf muscle, as well as the gastrocnemius and the tibialis anterior, which sit at the front of the leg, did not show this effect on mTOR. So indeed, mechanical tension and recruitment of muscles are the primary driver of muscle growth and muscle hypertrophy. Let's go back to the study. And what is cool about this research group uh, led by Professor Wim de Rave, you should definitely look up all of his research. What they always try to understand is why is there differences or why is there an individual variation between people? You see it, for example, here, the gray bars in this graph are the total hypertrophy within the body of all the muscles analyzed. And you see here that some subjects, for example, subject one and two, gained a lot of muscle, and some actually uh, gained or even did not gain any muscle. And the blue bars here show the muscle atrophy within those individuals. And you see here that also the ones who gained the least amount of muscle also had the highest amount of atrophy. So why is this? Why is there so much differences between people? And then we have to look at the nutrition. Because uh, as you remember from the introduction, the, the researchers also looked or at least tried to estimate the total amount of energy that the participants took in, the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fats, and so forth. And now it gets interesting because you see here in the non-recruited muscles, so again, this is the focus of this paper, obviously, the non-recruited muscles, you see that the people with low energy intake, which was arbitrarily put at, let me just check here the right data, would be um, around 32 kilocalories per 
kilogram body weight, it seems that those people who ate lower intake compared to the ones who did higher intake, which was 36 kilocalories per kilogram body weight, so substantially more, there in the non-recruited muscles, there were substantially less muscle atrophy and even no change in muscle volume. Indeed, if you would correlate the change in muscle volume during that 10, 10 weeks of training with energy intake as well as protein intake, there was a positive correlation. This means that if an individual is able to consume more protein and more energy, there's a lesser chance that this person will actually get atrophy of the non-recruited muscles, in this case, the adductor magnus, who, which was a muscle that actually significantly decreased in muscle volume together with the soleus muscle. So, all right, this brings us to the mechanisms and this again shows how ingenious the human body is. We know that when a muscle has insufficient amount of energy available, there will be protein breakdown or muscle protein breakdowns from big proteins or big amino acid chains into small peptides or single amino acids. And those single amino acids are then via the bloodstream provided towards the muscles that are actively being recruited, for example, during exercise, resistance exercise, functional movements, and so on and so forth. And those amino acids then can be obviously used as building blocks to gain muscle. So again, this shows that where the recruitment is, there will be hypertrophy or adaptation. In contrast to when muscles are not recruited, there will be atrophy and loss of adaptation. So I thought that was quite interesting. So this brings us to the take home message of this video. First of all, if you want to avoid losing muscle or losing muscle volume in non-recruited muscles, it's very important to design training programs that recruit all muscle groups. You can do this by including functional whole body movements or compound movements, for example, back squats, deadlifts, pull-ups, presses, and so on, where you re recruit multiple muscle groups to do the movements instead of single joint, pure bicep curls, for example. If you don't want to do the whole functional movement thing, you can also do split sets where you do upper body, lower body in, on different days, but also add some accessories where you add smaller muscle groups or at least resistance training for smaller muscle groups. I think that would be uh, helping you to actually target the whole body. And then nutrition, importantly, you need to eat sufficiently high amount of energy and also proteins. For example, protein, it is recommended to eat more than 1.6 gram per kilogram body weight of protein, all right? So you can calculate it for yourself how much that is. You just multiply your body weight times 1.6 or total energy intake, it's also important you would have to go for 36 kilocalories per kilogram body weight. Good? Cool. So this brings us to the question of this video, and it would be which two non-recruited muscles showed significant atrophy, so muscle loss, in this study? If you know the answer and are subscribed to the channel, please add your answer in the Google survey, which is linked in the description then you have a chance to win a voucher for a free training program or to your choice a free one-to-one -one consultation of one hour which is worth hundred dollars so that's a quite a nice price and i think it's worthwhile your two minutes of time if you like this video and you want to get more out of the what science brand i highly suggest looking at our website we just revamped it a little bit uh, there's an opportunity to look at our training program so many of the principles what we talk about in the videos are incorporated into our functional training programs, as well as you have the opportunity to uh, book a free or a paid one-to-one -one consultation with me. If you want to talk with me one-to-one -one about certain things I said in the videos or things that are related to your own training or the training of your clients, don't hesitate to book or a free intro call or a 30 or 60 minute session all available via our website. Good, I want to thank not only you for watching, but also the authors for setting up such a cool study. I think it's not only very, very valuable for the, let's say the scientific community, but also for the everyday exercises who just goes to the gym once or twice every couple of days. That was it from me today. I hope you liked it. If you want to learn more on how to build muscle while doing functional movements, for example, CrossFit, just have a look at the video popping up right here.